1.4 using the definitions of the trigonometric functions. So reciprocal identities. So sine theta is the same thing as 1 over cosecant theta. So that means cosecant theta is the same thing as 1 over sine theta. Do you notice that these are just like the opposites of each other? Opposite means reciprocal. So cosine theta is the same thing as 1 over secant theta. And secant theta is 1 over cosine theta. Tangent theta is 1 over cotangent theta. And cotangent theta is 1 over tangent theta. All right. So we're going to be using the reciprocal identities. So let's find cosine theta given that secant theta is uh, 5 over 3. So we're going to do this the long way, and then we're going to do this the easy way. So for A, we need to find cosine theta. So we know, we know cosine theta, we know this. It equals 1 over secant theta. It tells us that right here. So if we want to find it, we're just going to plug in our secant theta. So we have cosine theta equals 1 over secant theta. So our secant is 5 over 3. And this is where we simplify. So we keep change flip. So we do cosine theta equals 1 divided by 5 over 3. So that's 1 times 3 over 5. So cosine theta is 3 over 5. We just said though that cosine and secant and or sorry sine and uh, cosecant. We've been talking about this already. They are reciprocals of each other. If they are reciprocals of each other, don't we just flip it? Could have we just flipped five over three? Yes, we could have. Yes, that is absolutely right. But we still need to know how to use the reciprocal um, identities because we're going to use them interchangeably inside of equations and stuff like that. But just know if you're trying to find one of them, just flip it, you're good to go. All right, so for B, we want to find sine theta, but we're given cosecant theta is negative square root of 12 over 2. So we know that sine theta is the same thing as 1 over cosecant theta. So we know that because they're reciprocals. Since they're reciprocals, we're just going to flip it. We're just going to flip cosecant of what they give us. When we flip it, it becomes sine. So if we flip negative square root of 12 over 2, we'll have negative 2 square root of 12. Now, of course, we're going to simplify that. So we rationalize our denominator. I don't know what happened there. There we go. When we rationalize our denominator, we get negative 2 square root of 12 over 12. We can simplify that. Uh, we can simplify 12. We can simplify that down into square root of 2, square root of 3. So just as a reminder, square root of 12 is square root of 4, square root of 3, which is 2 square root of 3. So we're going to switch that to its appropriate um, simplified version. So we'll have negative 2, and then we here we have 2 square root of 3, all over 12. So we can keep simplifying. So we have negative 4 on top over 3 square root of 12. Simplify the 4 and the 12. So we're left with sine theta equals square root of 3 over 3, and that's negative you could have done it how we did part A, but why, if we know that it's the reciprocal, we just flip it? Okay, so signs of function values. So everything in quadrant one is positive. So if you're working in quadrant one, sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant, those are all positive. In quadrant two, the only thing that's positive is sine and cosecant. In quadrant three, the only thing that's positive is tangent and cotangent. Do you notice that they're reciprocals of each other? Sine, cosecant, those are reciprocals of each other and they're both positive. For our third one, uh, tangent and cotangent, those are reciprocals of each other, that's why they're positive. For the fourth quadrant, cosine, secant, those are reciprocals of each other and that's why they're positive. So here's a little chart 
uh, in quadrant one, all your functions are positive. In quadrant two, your sine and cosecant are positive. Quadrant three, your tangent and cotangent are positive. And then quadrant four, your sine and secant are positive. Also, do you notice that in quadrant one, x is positive, y is positive. In quadrant two, x is negative, y is positive. That's what this is saying up here. In quadrant three, we have x is negative, y is negative. And in quadrant four, we have x is positive, y is negative. Now, there's this nifty little uh, cheat sheet that I um, get made for you guys. Now, you're not allowed to use the cheat sheet for the test, but it's a great way to remember what's positive and what's not in what quadrant. All right, so it's it's uh, ca it's called cast. So how to use cast to help knowing which quadrants produce positive trigonomic functions. So you use the acronym CAST. C, cosine and secant, so it's C, S, T, the reciprocals also go with it. So with C, it's cosine, so secant is the reciprocal, so that's all positive. Quadrant 1 is all positive, sine and cosecant for quadrant 2, and quadrant uh, 3 is tangent and cotangent. So this is quadrant three, uh, 4, quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3. So it goes like this. So you're starting here and it goes like this. So you start at quadrant four. I know that's horrible. I hate that we have to start at quadrant four, but it's the best way to remember what's positive and what's not is using the acronym CAST. So C, cosine and secant are positive. A, all are positive. S, sine and cosecant are positive. T, tangent and cotangent are positive. Everything else is negative. Every other function is negative. So if we're talking about quadrant two, tangent, cotangent, negative. Cosine, secant, negative. The only thing that's positive in quadrant two is sine and cosecant. So this is a really good cheat sheet to use. It's going to help you memorize what, memorize what quadrants have positive and negative values. All right, so let's determine signs of functions of non-quadrantal angles. So determine the signs of the trigonomic function of an angle in standard position with the given measure. So we're basically figuring out, is this going to be a positive value, a negative value? Like, what, what is it going to be in terms of the six trigonomic functions? So we have 87 degrees. 87 degrees, that's in quadrant one. Since it's in quadrant one, we know everything is positive in quadrant one. So in quadrant one, all trig values are positive, and that's 87 degrees, so that's in quadrant one. All right, um, 300. So 300, and you can pull out the unit circle, or you can pull out um, a circle for this, the unit circle, to figure out where this is at. But 300, that's in quadrant four. Since it's in quadrant four, the only thing positive in quadrant four is cosine, therefore also secant. That's using cast. Quadrant four is the C. So quadrant four, if we use cast, remember it's C, A, S, T. So quadrant four, the only thing positive is cosine and secant. Everything else is negative. So what's negative? Sine. And then the reciprocal to that, secant. And then we also have tangent, and the reciprocal of that, cotangent. So only thing positive is cosine and secant. So negative 200 degrees. Now, where do I know where these are on, in, on the coordinate plane? Well, go back to quadrilateral angles, and that's going to help you. But it's something that you're just going to easily pick up. You're going to be able to visualize, OK, 87, that's quadrant 1. 300 quadrant four, negative 200, that's quadrant two. It will come easier and easier the more and more you get through the course. But go back to coterminal angles if you're kind of struggling where this is going to be. So we're in quadrant two now. So quadrant two, the only thing positive in quadrant two, uh, quadrant two is sine. Therefore, also cosecant is positive. Everything else is negative. Everything else. So everything else is cosine and secant. And then tangent, cotangent. All right. Identify the quadrant of an angle. Identify the quadrant or possible quadrants of any angle theta that satisfies the given condition. So we're saying sine theta is greater than zero and tangent theta 
is less than zero. So what this is saying is that sine is positive. And then what this is saying is that tangent is negative. So if that were the parameters and that was the rule of that example or that application, what quadrant are, or quadrants are we going to be in? So let's figure out where sine is positive. So sine is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. That's where sine is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. Tangent, and again, I'm using cast. I'm using my cast. Tangent is negative in either quadrant 2 or quadrant 4. So where they match up, that's where this example or answer is going to take place. It's going to take place in quadrant 2. All right. I want you to go ahead, and this is going to be a theme, Pause the video and try B. I hope you did it. I hope you tried. So let's do this together. All right, so cosine theta is less than zero. That's saying cosine is negative. Then it's telling us that secant is less than zero. So that means it's negative. So cosine is negative in quadrant two and quadrant three. Secant is negative in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. So you see how they have matching ones? They have multiple matching. That's okay. That means the answer is quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. So for this example, we would be working in both quadrants. All right, ranges of trigonometric functions. So if you have sine and cosine, the range is negative 1 to 1. This little here, this absolute value, just means it's going to be whatever you plug in, it's, it's going to be positive. For tangent and cotangent, your range is anything, all real numbers. And for secant to cosecant, your range is uh, from negative infinity to negative 1 and 1 to infinity. Let's decide whether a value is in the range of the trigonometric trigonometric function, decide whether each statement is possible or impossible. So we're going to be using the ranges to figure out, is this even a possible answer or is it impossible? Okay, so let's, we're going to be looking at this little chart. Now, you're not allowed to use any charts for any test. It's stuff that we're going to have to memorize. All right, so it says sine theta is 2.5. That means it's saying y equals 2.5 for sine functions. Now that's impossible. It's impossible because the range is negative 1 to 1. Remember, the range is what y can and cannot be. So if y is 2.5, it doesn't fall into the range, so it's impossible. All right, I want you to go ahead and pause and try b. So it's telling us y equals 110.47. Now looking at my tangent and cotangent functions, y can be anything that's real, any real number from negative infinity to infinity. So since y can be anything, this is possible. It says secant theta equals 0 0.06. So we're saying y equals point si sorry, 0 0.6. Point 0.6. Point 0.6 does not fall between negative infinity, negative 1, 1 to infinity. So what this is saying here in this little part right here, it's saying y cannot be like negative 1 to 1. So it cannot be negative 0.99, cannot be negative 0.98, it cannot be negative 0.5, it cannot be 0, it cannot be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, or anything like that. So this is impossible. And we're only answering A, B, and C given the range. All right, example five, finding function values given one value in the quadrant. So suppose that angle theta is in quadrant two and sine theta equals two thirds. Find the values of the other five trigonometric functions. So we're given quadrant two. So let's draw it, quadrant two, looks like this. Then it states that we're given sine theta 
is two-thirds. So that means we have this angle somewhere coming out in quadrant two. It doesn't matter where you put it. You could do that. You could put it like this. You could you could put it like this. We just put it like kind of in the middle. Why do we do that? Because it tells us we're working in quadrant two. We are. So we're given that sine theta is two over three. So remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse using SOHCAHTOA. So what we do is we finish off this triangle to the x-axis. It's going to be a right triangle because it, it's perpendicular. And we fill out opposite over hypotenuse. So what we're doing, so this is our angle, that's theta. Opposite is 2. Hypotenuse is 3. So we need to find the missing leg. So anytime you need to find a missing variable with a triangle and it's a right triangle, you're always going to be using the Pythagorean theorem. Now, majority of the time, I will never show you how to do this. But for this example, I will show you how to use the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem, we have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That's the same thing as leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared, also known as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So for our x squared, this right here, that's what we're trying to find. We don't know it, so it's just x squared. And then plus y squared, y is 2. And then r squared, that's always your hypotenuse, so 3 squared. So we're going to have 2 squared, which is 4. We subtract it over. So we have x squared equals 9 minus 4. 3 squared is 9. So we have x squared equals 5. We take the square root. And we get x squared is possibly positive or negative square root of 5. Now, how do we know if it's positive or negative? Well, it's on the negative x-axis. It's on the left side of the x-axis. So that means it's going to be negative square root of 5. Because quadrant 2, x is negative. That's why it's negative square root of 5. Also, on the left side are my negative x's, and on the right side are my positive x's. All right, now that we have it filled out, we can figure out everything else. So we can figure out cosecant theta. We can figure out cosine theta. What's the opposite of cosine? Secant theta. Then we can find, I'm going to do it over here, we can do tangent theta, and then cotangent theta. All right, so cosecant theta, remember, that's the literal reciprocal of sine, so 3 over 2. You just flip the sine function. All right, so for cosine, remember, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is negative square root of 5. Hypotenuse is 3. For secant theta, we literally just flip cosine. So when we flip it, we have 3 over negative square root of 5. So we simplify to get negative on the outside. 3 square root of 5 over 5. All right, now we do tangent theta. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. Toa, that's opposite over adjacent. So 2 over negative square root of 5. When we simplify that, it's just negative and then 2 square root of 5 over 5. And then for cotangent theta, we literally just flip tangent, but we're going to flip the tangent before we simplified. So it'd be negative square root of 5 over 2. All right, so you've heard of the Pythagorean theorem. You've heard of Pythagora. And anyways, that, that was that dude's name, and they were part of the Pythagorean um, group, however you want to say it. So Pythagorean identities. Now, what I'm about to show you and talk about these three things, most important things that we're really going to discuss in trigonometry is learning how to use identities. So our first identity, we have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. That's also known as x squared plus y squared, also known as the Pythagorean theorem. 
So the Pythagorean theorem is literally sine squared theta plus so cosine squared theta equals 1 using the unit circle because the unit circle, the radius is only 1. Then we have tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. And then we also have 1 plus cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta. And any form of these. So what do I mean by any form? We could also do cosine squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. You know, we just subtracted and moved it over. So you could do that with any of these. You can subtract, move stuff over, and it's an equivalent form. Okay, another important identities are quotient identities. So tangent is the same thing as sine over cosine. So therefore, cotangent is the same thing as cosine over sine. Example six, using identities to find function values, find sine theta and tangent theta, given that cosine theta equals negative three over four and sine theta is greater than zero. So that little part greater than zero, that's gonna come in handy afterward. So we're given, given cosine theta is negative 3 over 4, negative square root of 3 over 4. So that's what we want to pay attention to. We're given that. We need to find sine theta and tangent theta. One step at a time, though. So let's find sine theta first. So we're, we need sine. We're given cosine. We need sine. We're given cosine. You see how we have two out of the three pieces? Whenever you have two out of the, or how only missing one piece, we're only missing one piece here for the Pythagorean identity. That's how you know you're going to use that identity. Now, why would I not use tangent and secant? First off, I don't have anything about secant. I have nothing about secant whatsoever. So if I have nothing about it, I can't use that identity. Why wouldn't I use the last identity? Well, I know nothing about cotangent, and it's not asking me to find it, so I cannot use that identity. The reason why we use the first identity, because we need to find sine. Awesome. Check. We're given cosine. Check. And then it's just a number. So we're only missing one piece of that equation. So we're going to be using the Pythagorean identity of sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So I don't know sine theta. That's what we're trying to find. If you're like, but we're trying to find sine theta, not sine squared theta. Don't worry. I got you. We're given cosine theta. We're given cosine theta. It's negative square root of 3 over 4, but we're squaring it, and that equals 1. The cosine squared theta means your cosine is squared. That's all that means. So let's simplify. We have sine squared theta equals square, or sorry, 3, sorry, wow. Sine squared theta plus 3 over 16. Remember, it goes top and bottom. 3 over 16 equals 1. We subtract 3 over 16 to both sides. So we have sine squared theta equals 16 over 16 minus 3 over 16. So then we get sine squared theta equals 15 over, sorry, 13 over 16. We take the square root. That's how we get rid of it. We just take the square root. How do we get rid of squared? We square root. So we have sine theta equals positive negative square root of 13 over 4. Now, how do I know if it's positive? How do I know if it's negative? It tells us. Sine is positive. So that means we're going to take the positive version because it told us sine theta is greater than 0. So now we have sine theta. So we found sine theta given cosine. Now that we have both of those, we can go ahead and find our tangent. So tangent theta, we know a couple of identities for that. So we could, if we just look at our identities, so we're trying to find tangent, right? But I know nothing about secant. Right now, I know nothing about secant. You're going to learn later on, we actually know secant. We do. We, we actually do know it. We know the reciprocal, but that's not what we're doing for this. All right, so 
I'm trying to find tangent. This is not tangent. You'll learn in chapter 5, we could actually use this. We could use this. We could, because we could just take the reciprocals. But why, when that's hard, taking the reciprocals of stuff and adding, subtracting, squaring fractions, why? Why do that? Look at your other identities. We're trying to find tangent. We have cosine, and we just found sine. So you see how we have these three things? So we're going to be using tangent theta equals sine theta over cosine theta. So we have tangent theta equals sine theta. Remember, we just found sine theta. We found it. It's square root of 13 over 4. And then we're going to divide that by cosine theta. We were actually given cosine theta. It's negative square root of 3 over 4. Now we simplify. Denominators cancel. So we're left with tangent theta equals negative square root of 13 over square root of 3. We rationalize. So we have tangent theta equals negative. We uh, multiply top and bottom by square root of 3. So we have square root of 39 over 3. And there we go. We found our tangent. So given one function value, we were able to find sine and tangent. You see how we did it here using uh, formulas, identities? And when we did it here, we used pictures. Just keep that in mind for the whole rest of the semester. All right, so just be careful when you choose the sign. When you take a square root, remember, when you take a square root, it's positive and negative. So you have to be careful. Is it telling me is it going to be positive or negative? Is it telling me it's going to be in quadrant whatever? So be careful. So we're going to find sine theta and cosine theta given that tangent theta is 4 thirds and uh, theta is in quadrant 3. So if theta is supposed to be in quadrant 3, that means in quadrant 3, sine and cosine are negative in quadrant 3. Using cast, sine and cosine in quadrant 3 are negative. The only thing positive in quadrant 3, go all the way back up, I'll show you. The only thing positive in quadrant 3 are tangent and cotangent. We're not working with tangent and cotangent here. It's telling us we need to find sine and cosine in quadrant 3. So it's going to be negative. So that means if we have to take a square root, we have to remember it's going to be negative square root, not positive. We're trying to find sine theta, but we're given tangent theta. Let's look at our identities and see if we can even do that. All right, so we're given tangent. So the opposite, so we have tangent, we do. So the opposite of sine is cosecant, not secant, so we can't use this because that's not the opposite of sine. Now we can't use the first one because there's no, we're not given anything but tangent. Now what about the third one? So the third one, we're technically given cotangent, technically, because we're given tangent, therefore it's just the reciprocal. And then the reciprocal, the opposite, so we're talking about the opposite of what we're trying to find, the opposite of sine, the opposite of sine, going back to our identities, so the opposite of sine is cosecant, so we could use this, we could, we could use this equation, this identity, and just find the reciprocals of everything, but remember how I said working with a bunch of reciprocals, that's kind of hard. That's a little bit difficult. So let's see if we can do anything else beforehand. Let's go back to our original equation. All right, so we kind of figured out finding sine first is kind of a bust. It's not going to really work right now because we have to use reciprocals. Yes, we can find it, but we have to take the reciprocals of everything. So let's see if finding cosine is any easier. So we're given tangent, and remember the opposite of cosine is secant. So we're given tangent, and the opposite of cosine is secant. So you see here, we only have to use one reciprocal, but here, 
for the for sine we would have had to use two reciprocals instead of using two reciprocals i would rather use one reciprocal so we're going to be using tangent squared theta plus one equals secant squared theta plus one also this is already by itself which is the reciprocal of cosine all right so we're going to find cosine first but we're going to find it in the form of secant so we're going to be using tangent theta plus 1 equals secant theta. Sorry, secant squared theta, tangent squared theta. So our tangent is 4 thirds. So we have 4 thirds squared plus 1 equals secant squared theta. So we have 16 over 9 plus 9 over 9 equals secant squared theta. I just changed the 1 over 1 to 9 over 9 because I know I have to add them. So we have 25 over 9 equals secant squared theta. Take the square root to get secant by itself. Now, we're going to take either the positive or the negative. But remember, since it says quadrant 3, we're going to take the negative of this. So it would be 5 over 3 equals secant theta. And again, we take the negative because it told us that we're working in quadrant 3, which is negative. All right, so we found secant theta, but that's not what we're trying to find. Remember, we're trying to find cosine um, theta. So just as a reminder, secant theta is the reciprocal of cosine theta. So we just flip it. So when we flip it, we get our cosine theta. We get our cosine theta is negative 3 over 5. All right, so now let's figure out what we have. We have tangent, they gave us that. And then we just found cosine, which was negative 3 over 5. All right, now we need to find sine theta. We don't know that. We don't know it. So we have tangent, cosine, we need to find sine. Remember that for when we talk about identities. All right, so with our identities, we have tangent, Yes, but that doesn't help us find sine. Like that's not that's not sine. That has nothing to do with sine. The only one that has sine in it is the first one. We need to find sine. We're given or we found cosine, so we can use this Pythagorean identity. So we're gonna use the Pythagorean identity of sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. But I need sine by itself, so we're gonna move cosine over. So we have sine squared theta plus, sorry, equals 1 minus cosine squared theta. So we have sine squared theta equals 1 minus our cosine squared. Remember, our cosine, we found that. It's negative 3 over 5. So we have sine squared theta equals 1 minus 9 over 25. So we have 25 over 25 minus 9 over 25. So we're left with sine squared theta equals 16 over 25. We're going to take the square root. So when we do, we're left with sine theta equals positive or negative 4 over 5. But since we're working in quadrant 2, or excuse me, quadrant 3, Quadrant 3 states that it's negative. Sine and cosine is negative in quadrant 3, so we're going to be taking the negative version of that. So we did find cosine and we did find sine.